You know, I am not a smart man. And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb. But that's just the way it is. Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods here on this Father's Day. And happy Father's Day out there to all of the fathers that have been fathers if you haven't been the father that you should have been there for your kids i ain't wishing you happy father's day because you know what you missed out one of the greatest things that have happened in my life was being a single parent raising my kids and having them there and i said this last night during my live excuse me my fireside chat that it was a two-way street because without my kids i don't know that i'm here where i am right now I certainly have to thank my daughter for getting me involved into YouTube. So if you want somebody to blame, you can blame my baby. But all seriousness out there, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And I'm going to say happy Father's Day to all the single mothers out there that did not have their baby's daddy there to help raise them. This day's for you as well. So we're here and you know, it's kind of crazy. Okay. I am just accused of just being the guy that's always trying to save Dak Prescott and Dak Prescott. Happy father's day. You're very first of being a dad. Um, I'm always accused of trying to stand up for Dak Prescott. Not that Dak Prescott needs me to do anything it, this day and age has turned into the era of the trolls. No matter what you do, people are going to troll you. They enjoy being miserable. I choose to be happy. I rolled over this morning excited and happy about having my beautiful wife right next to me for 21 years and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for being here and being able to see my kids on Father's Day. I'm so happy and so thankful for that. I don't have time to waste the precious time that I have on hating somebody else. I recognize what it was like after the great Troy Aikman and the teams of the 90s and seeing the Dallas Cowboys trying to figure it out. As bad as you think the Cowboys are, I remember living through 5 and 11, 5 and 11, 5 and 11, three years in a row. Three years in a row. I remember like it was yesterday, 8 and 8, 8 and 8, 8 and 8, seeing the Giants, the Commanders, and the Eagles all go to the playoffs on the last week of the season where we failed to get one win that would put us in. I'll take the 12 and 5 over those days anytime. I will take Dak Prescott over the quarterback salad of bums from Ryan Leith, Anthony Wright. I'm not, not saying all these guys were bums. The Quincy Carters, the Drew Breeses, the uh, Clint Stoners. And uh, I mean, there were so many. We, we literally, if, if you actually joke about the commander's quarterback situation that they have, where they've literally gone from Donovan McNabb to uh, RG3 to uh, Kirk Cousins and, you know, uh, Dwayne Haskins and Alex Smiths and Colt McCoys and all that stuff. That, my friends, is what it was like being a Dallas Cowboy fan. We bring in more and more guys to find out they were stiffs and weren't going to do anything. See, some of y'all have a short memory. Some of y'all don't remember last week, much less five or six years ago. I say these things about Dak Prescott because when I say Dak Prescott had 36 TD passes, oh, big deal. They were against scrubs. Well, if that's the case, why aren't there like a thousand quarterbacks in the history of the NFL that have done that? There's only 21. When I say 37, there's only 15 guys. When I literally say 42 TDs, 4,600 yards, 
gets Dallas uh, Dak Prescott the Dallas Cowboys all time records in yardage and things. It's like okay, he's a bum. Then how come Quincy Carter didn't do that? How come Clint Stoner didn't do that? Be that as it may, a couple weeks ago we saw Nick Wright and Colin Cowherd literally, literally say their top 16 or top 15 quarterbacks didn't have Dak Prescott in there. Did not have Dak Prescott in there. And now the conversation is, should Dak Prescott get $60 million? Now here's what's funny. Because as much as they try, as he trashed Dak and basically saying he's not a top 16 quarterback. And come on, let's, let's be real here. Even the haters out there. Oh, I'm sorry. Philly 500 still thinks that Jalen Hurts is a top five, but that, that, that is what it is. We all know Dak is a top 10, at least a top 10. The guy who had the most TD passes, a runner up for MVP. You're telling me that there's 15 guys that are better. Come on, man. Stop smoking crack. But here's what's funny about Nick Wright, who literally just trashed Dak. And this is where you know, listen, we're trying to get a reaction. We're trying to get a reaction because either you, 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 you believe in what you say and you continue it with consistency. You don't go from one side to the other because this is what Nick Wright. Now, I can't actually show the video. I'm going to play the video and hope that we don't get copyrighted. But listen to what Nick Wright had to say three months ago about Dak Prescott and the quarterback market. And he was, oh, my God, I, 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 it, you would have thought that, you know, he had a time machine and went forward about Trevor Lawrence. Let's listen to this. Dak Prescott's going to be the highest paid player in league history, and people are going to freak out. True. And that was right before we had a perfect Dak Prescott season mm -hmm. for this exact conversation, which was his best ever regular season right. and arguably his worst ever postseason moment or game. And so here's the deal. Like, the, the Cowboys put themselves in this spot. They gave Dak Prescott a no-tag clause. They gave Dak Prescott a no-trade clause. And they keep borrowing from Dak's contract. So yep. – his current cap hit is $60 million next year. And if you're just like, all right, we're going to swallow it and deal with it and move on, the year after, it's $36 million for him not to be on the team. Three months so ago. they have to extend him. They have to rework it, which means in a world where Justin Herbert got $52.5 million and no one batted an eye, Dak Prescott, it's going to start at three years, 175 which is $58.7 million a year. And the reason three is because he wants to be back in this position again. That's just – Joe, Trevor Lawrence is about to get $56 million a year. Whether you guys like it or not, it's going to happen. And in that world, Dak's going to get this, and people are going to lose their minds. And the Cow – Did he say $56 million? Well, and, and at that time, you were like, Trevor Lawrence? Trevor Lawrence going to get – no. It's like you don't know – No. He got 55. Let, let me go back because, listen, he was spot on. Three years, 175, which is $58.7 million a year. And the reason three is because he wants to be back in this position again. That's just – Joe, Trevor Lawrence is about to get $56 million a year. Whether you guys like it or not, it's going to happen. And in that world, Dak's going to get this, and people are going to lose their minds, and the Cowboys kind of shrugs – have no options because it's really untenable to have him play on his current contract, and then you also could lose him for nothing. Well, I remember going back to 2020. We're in a pandemic, and everyone's sitting on these home shows, and the break the fourth mm -hmm. wall, it's like, hey, we're starting the show with Cowboys. I don't yeah. care if you like it or not. <laughs> we start the show with Cowboys. All right. And everyone was freaking out over whether Dak was worth $35 million. To your yeah. point, salary cap has gone bonkers. Look at the top – paid quarterbacks right now. Yeah. I requested this yeah. this screen here. Look, guys, Dak is already 10th, and when he signed it at $40 million a year, everyone freaked out then. The, it's gone absolutely bonkers since Jalen Hurts is making $51 million next year. Yeah, Dak will make 60. Dak is a very good quarterback. And if when he makes 60, the next contract will be 65, next one will be 70. I, this report, which comes from Jordan Schultz, I don't think it's, it's necessarily uh, one of these where it's like, he's getting the deal, but it's a bit of speculation, but I'm not going to bat my eye at it because I think that might be the going rate by the time we start negotiating for Dak Prescott, whether it makes sense at home or not. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, who, who did win? 
he was the highest paid quarterback he was. in the league. Matthew Stafford in Detroit was Joe the highest Flacco. paid quarterback. So it, it is just the timing of it. Kirk Cousins. I'll tell you what, though. If I'm Jerry Jones, Derek Carr. I am sitting down with Dak, not his agent. I'm sitting down with Dak and saying, look, you make a ton of money off the field. Uh, here we go. Um, All right. So here we have it. This $60 million a year shouldn't be a surprise. Now, here's a, this is another one where you kind of get a little bit of truth from the pundits sprinkled in with all the other bullshit. Because this is what happened just uh, 10 days ago. So this was 10 days ago on Speak. They were talking about should Tua reset the quarterback market with the 56 million and should it be a surprise so let's go the market is the market let's take a look at the market joe burrow most average annual value that's how he makes every year on average then jared goff 53 million 52 herbert lamar 52 hertz 51 if you look at the bottom you will see the dates they signed those deals burrow in september mm -hmm. goff recently obviously in may then you see herbert lamar Jalen hertz joy taylor that is the market the market it's the market. The market's roughly 51 to $55 million, 55 to reset the market. So should Tua Tungabailoa reset the quarterback market? Yes. Ooh. Is Tua the franchise quarterback for the Miami Dolphins? Yes, he is. If the answer is yes, then yes, he resets the market. That is how this works. If you have some questions about Tua, you can have questions about Tua, but you don't write these checks, so you shouldn't concern yourself about it. Mm. This is not your money. This is how the quarterback market works. Oh. Next. Franchise quarterback that's up gets paid in one way or another. Every deal is not the same. First of all, the NFL salary cap, I mean, people get paid a lot of money to manage the NFL salary cap and explain it and put it into these contracts. Each contract from Hertz to Burrow to Herbert to Goff to Lamar Jackson are all very different. They all have very different stipulations in them. They have more money up front. They have the ability to be flexible over years. They can restructure certain contracts year to year. I'm not mm -hmm. going to break it all down, but if you want to do the research, know. maybe I'll email this to you. It's very, very complicated. Just because somebody hits the most, the highest paid on this day does not mean that they're going to stay the highest paid. There the you go. It's going to be the highest paid and so on and so forth. And every time a quarterback signs these deals, unless they are somebody who is like a Patrick Mahomes or a Joe Burrow, there is some level of anxiety of, is it worth it? Can you win a Super Bowl with them? That, those are all very reasonable questions. But the reality is all of these teams are not going to win Super Bowls with these players that have been paid. That is just the truth. That's how it works. We love to think that every super talented quarterback is capable of getting to a Super Bowl. We have seen year after year after decade after decade of talented guys who were paid according to the market who did not win championships for their team. <clears throat> if hmm. this is your franchise guy, let's just let's even shorten it. Franchise is so big, such a big word. Such let's a big word. You think he's the quarterback for the next three years. Of course you sign a deal. After three years, if you structure the deal properly, you will be able to move on from this deal. I think he is the quarterback for the next three years, if that makes everyone more comfortable. Because franchise feels like, oh, boy, he's going to be there for the next 10 years. Nobody has a 10-year deal except for Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> so stop worrying about 10 years. We might not even have a planet in 10 years. Let's worry about the next three years. Okay, let's just focus on that. And if that is the case, then yes, you should reset the market. They should definitely have stipulations about injuries <clears> because he is somebody who has had a lot of injuries. Perhaps you structure it with more money up front so that if he does get injured again, you have some flexibility on the back end if you have to move on from him. But there have been a lot of big deals signed that seemed like the end of the world for organizations, and they're able to move on if they don't think it is the guy. I think he's the guy for the next three to four years. You sign the deal. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Tua should absolutely reset the market, in large part because what the Miami Dolphins have asked Tua to do, he has done. Hey, stay healthy, Tua. Okay, did that. Hey, Tua, I need you to resurrect this franchise and take them back to the playoffs. Okay. Did that. Hey, Tua, I, think, I need you to travail beyond all the muck, which is the chaos in the organization. Remember Tua's first two years, coaching changes, yeah. chaos within the coaching. Okay, did that. The Tua, Tua, I need you to make the Dolphins relevant again. Okay, did that. But here's what's most fascinating as to why Tua should reset the market. If you look at the quarterbacks making 50 plus million dollars, the Hertzes, the Burroughs, the Herberts, mm. the Goffs, and the Jacksons, look at Tua the last two years. He's first in yards per game. He's first in yards per attempt. He's first in pass rating. He's first in passing touchdowns. Is that every category? Absolutely not. But a gentleman who is first in that many meaningful statistics, passing yards per game, passing touchdowns, and passer rating, that is a man who should be able to reset the market. Has Tua won the playoff game or games that you would want him to? No. Does mm -hmm. he still have room to grow? Absolutely. freaking lutely But at this junction in time, you asked him to stay healthy, he did. You asked him to be in MVP conversations, he did. You asked him to make the Dolphins 
Dolphins relevant again? He did. Since he's gotten with Mike McDaniel, he's been a top flight quarterback. He's shown you that. He has to be able to reset the market. So wait a minute. So Tua, see, this This is my point here. It's, it's, it's Tua, he just said, have you had the playoff success? No, but you stayed healthy. You, you played good. You made the franchise relevant. Now, we just heard, of course, Peter Strauss or whatever his name is, talking about we got to start with the Cowboys, the Cowboys, the Cowboys, the Cowboys. Isn't the Cowboys relevant? Isn't the Cowboys in the playoffs the last three years? Isn't he in the MVP conversation? So th th there's the argument right there. So I'm trying to. Um, I'm, I'm actually going through all of these right now. So now we get. Let, uh, this is another one. This is Rob. A Parker. new contract. Let, let, I, I just have Cowboys to listen. One. I, 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 have, I don't know what this one's got. They have to do essentially so they can, you know, move some money around and have some money to. Give the, the headline Mike is Carson, the Cowboys Lane, should demand a discount guys. on Dak but Prescott's next contract. But the report says, and Rob G, correct me if I'm wrong, that Dak Prescott, Rob, wants $60 million per year. Now, Joe Burrow currently is the highest paid mm -hmm. quarterback in the NFL, hey. making $55 million mm -hmm. a year. Uh, Rob Parker, what are your thoughts? No way, no how would I give Dak Prescott sixty million. I don't care, Chris, if he's in line for it, and we know how it goes. It's all about when your contract's up, and the right. next guy is usually the highest paid guy. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you got to buck the trend. If you're the Dallas Cowboys, why, why is it always when it comes say, up to Dak? We're not paying you that. Can we put on the film of the playoff game you had against Green Bay? That debacle. And look at your postseason record and look at the years that we've lost postseason games at home and struggled offensively. We're not doing it. And if you want to stay a part of the Dallas Cowboys if you want. and you want to keep making all that endorsement money for being a, cow right. a quarterback on the Dallas Cowboys, you're going to give us a Texas discount. What do they say, Chris? Everything's bigger in Texas, including a discount when you stink. <laughs> so wait a minute. So hold up. We just saw Trevor Lawrence reset the market. And he ain't been in the NBC conversation, ain't been a playoff quarterback but one year. It ain't anywhere close to MVP conversation. Nobody bats an eye. Nobody bats an eye. You go through with Tua and you say, well, you stayed healthy. You were MVP conversation. You made the playoffs. You basically stayed out of trouble. And yes, you should reset the market. Dak has been in the playoffs the last three seasons. In fact, they haven't had a losing season where he's played more than 50% of the games. And we say he, that the Cowboys should demand a discount. Now, I'm going to finish, finish this off. I, I, again, I'm, I'm listening to these because I usually don't have enough time to go through all these. My kids are here for Father's Day, so I want to get out of here. Um, but this is Sean and RJ um, about looking uh, the, the, the getting $55 million a year. This is yesterday. Trevor Lawrence got $55 million a year. That Dak still is looking more unlikely. So I'm just going through. I want to hear what they have to $200 million guaranteed. Woo! 142 million at signing. How much does this hurt Jerry Jones with the Dak Prescott negotiation? Just waiting and waiting and waiting. Ian Rappaport, NFL Network, with the latest. Yeah, that is to be determined. And really, the ball is in the Dallas Cowboys court. You know, we have talked about this. We talked about it at the league meeting in March that the Cowboys have really made no moves toward an extension for Dak. That mm. still is where it remains. Now, you can do a new deal. Before training camp, you can do a new deal before the season. There is still time, but you know all of the leaves that uh, our good friend Jane blew with that leaf blower a couple weeks ago, they are now falling for the Cowboys. <laughs> the market is showing what it is. Judy mentioned it. Is it possible Dak Prescott gets $60 million if Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow are getting 55 and Dak has all the leverage and a huge number next year if they franchise him, which they can't? $60 million now becomes legitimately possible whether the Cowboys end up trying somehow, some way to do something for Dak, or whether he just simply plays it out, crushes it, goes to the free agent market, the number 60, as in 60 million, is no longer crazy 
it's now pretty real. I was like, who's Jane Blue? Did they add someone to the NFL <laughs> Network? And then Slater texted me her buying a leaf blower yeah. and airing it uh, to make fun of uh, Jerry, or to reference Jerry okay. and what they said about the I'm, the I'm just going to get a little yeah. of this. This is, uh, I mean, look, Burrow and, and, and I don't know that it does anything. Really? To change it. Here are the numbers. Highest paid quarterbacks on a per year basis. Hertz, 51. Lamar, 52. Herbert, 52 and a half. Goff, 53. Burrow, 55. Trevor, 55. Yeah, Dak was always going to ask for 60 or close to it. Mm -hmm. 55 was always going to be the number he was going to get to. That was like probably the floor, mm -hmm. right? That was probably Dak's like floor. Roughly. Ish. I, I mean, it, it, you, you know, might if, be right. If you're talking about like it, it doesn't one or change. Two million. It doesn't change the ask. It changes where the Cowboys have to go. Well, yeah, yes, but I think they always had to go to fifty-five anyway. Mm -hmm. No, I think they had to go above fifty-five. No, I think they always had to go to. At, that was the, always the floor. I think the Cowboys thought their settle point was fifty-five. I think the Cowboys' settle point now, best case scenario, is fifty-seven. Because now instead of just saying, "Well, Burrow's making fifty-five, reset the market," he's Joe Burrow, fifty-five, maybe fifty-six. Well, now you can argue, and you should argue. Trevor Lawrence is not as good as Dak Prescott. I can't so believe he said that. It's like the it's like the Lamb Jefferson thing, right? If Lamb got his money first, Jefferson would be like, "Yo, I'm four million dollars better than that." Mm -hmm. If I'm Dak's people, I'm saying it's no longer even. I can't with believe Burrow he's on side. Or or golf, it's that much more above Lawrence. Is that fair? Yeah, hmm. and, and what the Cowboys would probably say in response is, you guys have sat here and told us for the last couple negotiations that the market is the market and the next guy just resets it and it has nothing to do with who's better is that that's because yeah. Dak you you wanted to be paid like the second highest paid quarterback in the NFL even though you weren't the second best and so the Cowboys that's probably their angle of what they'll do what they'll try to say in the negotiation is no 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 fine we'll top it you're not going a a percentage above Lawrence yeah. though because that's not how you've told us the negotiations work for the they last They could top it in total guarantees. Okay. They could top it in, uh, in total value of the contract. They could top All right, we're going to just leave it right there. So it's interesting that you actually got a little bit of truth in there from Joy Taylor um, basically saying, you know, it's the next man up is the person getting paid, which is kind of interesting to say the least. And having Nick Wright, who literally said Dak's not a top 15 quarterback last week, who – literally just said he had an incredible season we love talking about this and he's going to get 60 million so anybody out there that's shocked that their conversation is 60 million after trevor lawrence getting 55 million a guy who i'm sorry you look at the resume other than him being drafted as the number one pick there's no comparison between what dak prescott has done versus trevor lawrence trevor lawrence regressed this past year, Trevor Lawrence had his team in a position to make the playoffs and they ended up being eight and eight. So, you know, I know I'll be trashed as always as you just a Dag Prescott lover, whatever, whatever, whatever. Happy Father's Day. Good people. And I'm out. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Thank you.